What's up guys? Today we're talking about infertility and coping right after the intro. Welcome to Midlife Mama. I'm Tiffany and on this channel I hope you'll find hope, inspiration, encouragement and some practical tips on mommyhood and self-care after 40. If you're new here, consider subscribing, joining the YouTube family, coming along for the ride. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for being here, for rocking with me and welcome back. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about coping with infertility. Not necessarily the specifics of my infertility story, but how I sort of coped with it and found the strength to move forward before I actually got pregnant. So this is a part of my story that's sort of been left untouched up until now. And I usually like to wait until I feel led to release a video like this. And this video has most recently been on my heart to share, but it's been sort of difficult rehashing it, if you will. So I'm finally sitting down to talk about this and without getting into like the logistics and the specifics of why I was infertile for so long um, because that that reason is different for everyone. I really want to focus on what I did in the wake of it and how I coped with it and how I finally found the strength to move forward. So without further ado, here we go. If you are a regular viewer, then you're sort of already in the know. If you're a newbie, if you're just joining the party, I had my first baby at 46 after years of believing that I would not be able to conceive a baby naturally. And that's it, you guys. That's, that's, you're, you're all caught up. Nevea is almost three years old now, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but she will be hitting three in December. So... I have notes, of course, here on my phone, so I'll be looking down at them because I don't want to, you know, leave anything out. I sort of have a list of points that I want to cover. Today I really want to talk about how I found the strength to move forward before I actually got pregnant with my daughter. And that is what this video will be about today. So I try to, like I said, I try to leave these videos, these types of videos for when I feel sort of moved or led to release them. And this is the time for this. I'm not sure who the video is for, but hopefully it reaches who it needs to reach. And hopefully if you know someone who is struggling with this, that you can share this video with them and hopefully it will help as well. So. Briefly, let me just cover like how my cycle was and how I sort of discovered that I was going to have difficulty conceiving. So I started my period at 16 and some people would say that's late, other people would say that's normal. I started my period at 16, I had a normal period at 16 and then a year later, I hadn't had a period, I hadn't had another period. Then six months into that second year, I actually had a period, then didn't have another period for another six months. And it sort of continued like that. I would have one period a year, maybe two periods a year. They were very long periods, um, heavy, eight days straight, and then there would be nothing. So I finally, went to a doctor about this and the doctor said that I was either dealing with PCOS or I was amenorrhea and I just had a very, very irregular cycle. I wasn't ovulating every month and the gist of it is that I have been told by a doctor before I turned 30 that I was going to need help conceiving naturally because of course my concern at the time when I went to the doctor was that I wasn't going to be able to get pregnant. The doctor told me that I would be able to get pregnant but that it would not be sort of a natural conception is what he, he said that I would need help. And he told me at the time I was still young, 
don't worry about it, I had options. So I definitely went into research mode and started looking into my options. And what I discovered was two things. So there were two things in play here. The biggest thing that was in play was that I was single, not married, not moving towards marriage at all. And if I was going to have to go through all of the, th all of the things that came with what my options were, I didn't want to have to do that alone and on my own. I wanted to have a partner. I wanted to be married and you know I wanted to have a life partner to sort of go through this with so that was a major factor the other thing is I really was sort of priced out of those options at the time and at the time I wasn't willing to let go of my dream of carrying my own baby and I really sort of held on to that for as long as I possibly could and we're gonna get into that in just a little bit, but that is the sort of foundation, the backstory. Been told by a doctor that I was gonna need help. I did research what my options were, and I decided to look into those options, but found that I was one, priced out of those options, and the other thing was that I wanted to be married. I didn't wanna to have to go through those that experience on my own as a single person. So, there you go. Um, I am not saying that you have to be married or that you have to not be single in order to go through the process of getting help to conceive a baby. That is not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that that is what I wanted. I wanted to be married and I didn't want to have to go through it alone. And that's, that's, that's all that is. So, the first few years, I just sort of ignored it. I, the doctor said, don't worry about it. He said that I had options. I really just didn't believe the doctor. I just sort of went into denial mode and decided when it was time for me to get pregnant that I would get pregnant and there wasn't gonna be that, it wasn't gonna be that big of a deal. It wasn't gonna be a problem. I was also still very young and really under the impression that I had tons of time and I just, I wasn't worried about it. And then, a few years in, still no babies, um, it really started to make me, when I hit my early, late 20s, early 30s, it really started to make me uh, appealing in the dating world, if you will. I was a woman of that age, late 20s, early 30s, no kids, and that really sort of made me appealing in the dating world, and I really sort of used it. The thing about that is that it made me, it made it very easy for me to sort of build up a facade, a front, a face that I could put on uh, and not have to deal with it. You know what I mean? So I didn't have to think about it too much and I was be able to, I was able to be distracted about dealing with it, sort of not dealing with it. And I kept busy, and that's just how I dealt with it for the first few years. But then, then the question sort of went from, wow, you don't have kids, to what? You don't have kids? And why don't you have kids? And when are you going to have kids? And then it started to become hurtful, and it started to become more difficult to, excuse me, it started to become more difficult to ignore it. And after years of sort of just not dealing with it, I now am confronted with it. Not only am I confronted with it, um, all of my friends are starting to have babies. All of my cousins have had babies. I'm literally the only one who has not had a baby yet. And I don't know if you, understand if you're not if you're if you're a woman who wants babies if you're a woman who wants to have kids the fact that you just can't uh, very easily conceive a baby and give birth and then conceive another baby and give birth the fact that you can't do that and it's the one thing that you want 
when you're confronted with it on a daily basis after not having to sort of face it, it's unnerving and it's painful. And this is what I was dealing with. It started to not be, not be a novelty anymore. It started to be a sort of a what's the matter with you type thing and what are you waiting for type thing. It started to be that and I started to put pressure on myself to to have kids like to 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 get it done it started to become a thing that it was the one thing that I wanted but I was able to distract myself with other things and finally now I'm faced with it and there is a how do I put this there is a special kind of hurt and disappointment and rage that comes with not being able to do what women are naturally supposed to be able to do. There's a, especially if it's what you want, if it's what you want. I have to keep stressing that because not every woman wants to have babies. But the women that do understand that there is there is a desperation, there is a, a void, a disappointment, a sadness, and rage. There is a rage that happens that you, it's inevitable if, if that's what you want. And that is what I was feeling at the time. And it became, it was a, I was able to suppress it until it became time for my childbearing years, my childbearing years to be gone, where I felt like I was running out of time, like, oh my God, like this is not gonna happen for me, are you kidding? And so that's where I was. And I found myself sort of in tears when someone would ask me about kids. And I found myself ultimately in this sort of deep despair about my situation. Mind you, I'm still not married. I'm still priced out of what my options are and still wanting to conceive my own baby, so not willing to look at all of the options, but just really dealing with having these emotions going on, going on inside of me and sort of just not knowing what to do with them. And where do you go from there? Where do you go from that spot? Like how do you get how do you get out of that cycle? And for me it was prayer. Like I had to just begin to pray. And in those moments, in those quiet moments, my answer was very clear that You've heard me talk about forgiveness on this channel before. You've heard me talk about it. Y'all know the video. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I'll link it down below. But y'all know the video. Um, you've heard me talk about forgiveness, and that was my answer. My answer was very clear. I had to do a lot of forgiving because I was angry at my body. I was mad at God and I was sad about all of it and I was starting to feel depressed about all of it and the answer was clear in those quiet moments when I couldn't find any other way out of it and that was forgiveness forgive God for ultimately saying for for seemingly saying no to the one thing that my heart was desiring and forgiving myself for sort of not putting myself in the best position to be able to take advantage of my options and forgive my body because my body felt, I felt like my body had betrayed me. Like a, how, how dare you not be able to do what you were made to do? And then forgive all of the hurtful comments because they're unintentionally hurtful, but still hurtful the same, still hurtful. And I'm holding on to all of it. So I had to forgive it in order to let go of it, in order to release it. And I'm, 
that didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight, but it did eventually happen. And from forgiveness, in forgiveness, I was able to grieve. I was able to grieve the loss of a dream. I was able to grieve the loss of my deep desire to have my own babies, my, my babies. And I was able to grieve the loss of all the kids that I would never have. And I just cried, cried a lot. Like there was deep sort of cleansing cries, cries and prayer. And I had to give myself sort of the permission to feel it, to feel the pain, face the pain, deal with the pain, deal with the anger, deal with the frustration, deal with the sadness, deal with the disappointment. I had to just sort of feel all of it. So grieving was, and, and this grief, it was, this was the hardest part. It was the hardest part to go through because the grief is where you sort of have to, you have to sort of open yourself up to it. You know how you sort of have to brace yourself for it. You know how you know something's going to hurt, but you know you have to do it. Sort of, I don't know, for lack of a better, I can't think of a better term, but for lack of a, like ripping off a Band-Aid. Like, you know there's going to be pain. <laughs> <laughs> but you you still have to get the band-aid off and I had to rip off the band-aid and just really uh it was hard I don't want to I don't wanna, I need to stress to you that it was hard and but there is a w reward in doing the things that are hard in life and for me this was that hard thing this was that hard thing to sort of get through the grief and that was the only way to do it like I couldn't sidestep it I couldn't go around it over it under it the only way was through it because you're going to be confronted with it you're faced with it your friends get married your uh, families they have babies you can't escape it so and when it hurts when things like that hurt you and you sort of have to deal with it like you have to confront it like can't get away from it so the best way to do is to find peace with it and that's the best thing to do is to find peace with it and that's what I had to do I had to make peace with it the only way for me to be able to make peace with it was for me to accept it get to acceptance and the only way for me to get to acceptance was to go through the grief and so I did it took myself through it. I got through the grief and I got to acceptance and there was a a new new thing, like a new new creature <laughs> that came from that and that I found sort of this inner strength and this freedom to now plan a future for myself that maybe didn't include me having a baby uh, naturally or me going through a pregnancy but I was able to live life fully in the knowledge that I probably wouldn't have kids and I was able to sort of look at other alternatives to motherhood and I was willing to sort of look at other alternatives to motherhood because before then you couldn't even talk to me about it. Like I would get offended, I would get mad, and I would get, uh, I would close myself off from it because I wasn't, hadn't fully let go of it yet and I hadn't fully accepted that yet. But getting to acceptance and getting through that grief opened up a whole lot more, opened up a new, way of thinking and a new world of freedom for me. I was able to live my life in happiness and the things that I chose to do, the plans that I made for myself 
We're not colored by sadness or grief or disappointment, but they were uh, now colored with optimism and positivity and possibilities. And we all know, I mean, you all know if you watch this channel, you all know that uh, turning the page from that uh, entered into a chapter of motherhood for me and it actually that chapter had me conceiving a baby naturally in my mid 40s and now living uh, as a mom and <laughs> doing the one thing that I always wanted to do which was have a baby um, we don't know what is in store for us you don't know what is in store for you but the reason I took myself through that process was because it was really starting to affect my life, my relationships. It was holding me back from moving forward with life. It was keeping me from making major decisions. It just, I was shackled, if that's the right word. I was sort of shackled by it. and. In order to walk in freedom, you have to break the chains. You have to sort of uh, release yourself from it. And going through that process is what helped me get there. So I have, I'm gonna leave you guys with this because I don't have to tell you how the story continues because it didn't end, that chapter ended and a new chapter began for me. You don't know what's in store for you. Um, you just don't know. But if you feel shackled, if you feel like you are uh, walking in sadness and grief and despair, and if you're holding on to it, and if, it's, if your heart is heavy, then I would encourage you to go through your process. Um, it will open up another way of thinking for you. It will open your heart up to new possibilities and it will ultimately free you. If you are trying to conceive, this is not a video to tell you to give up. I will never, ever, ever tell you that because I want you to have your baby. Like I want I want that for you guys because I know what it's like to want it and not get it. So, I want that for you guys. I'm just encouraging you or letting you know that if you get to a place where you've tried everything and you're in grief about not being able to sort of take yourself through that process. Don't get stuck in the grief and don't get stuck in the sadness, sort of get to a place of peace where you can be happy. And I would encourage you to do that anyway, before you uh, have a baby or before you, you know, all of that. It was, I think it was a great thing for me to get to the place where I felt whole, like a whole person like a complete person, strong, peaceful, not sad, but happy and optimistic. I think becoming that woman made me better equipped to be a mom. And so I think that you should understand one thing, and I've said this before, you are a whole person with or without a baby. You're enough. You can live a full and complete life whether or not you conceive a baby. And there are other avenues to motherhood. Um, yeah. Um, I pray that you find peace. I pray that you find your way through a sad time, your, sad, your sadness, if that's what you're feeling. And I hope this video was helpful. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to end this video. Like, I hope it helps. Um, you're enough. You can, 
you can find peace, um, but you have to do the hard thing. Like you have to take yourself through that process. And if you do it, there's a reward on the end of, on the other side of it. And that's all I got. That's all I got. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions for me, definitely chat with me down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for sticking with me, for checking out this video. And I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't done that already. I'll see you again with a happier video, I promise. And that's it. Take care. Catch up with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.